physics laws mostly, but we'll use them to do some interesting astronomy type problems. So in 1609, Johannes Kepler, on the basis of huge amounts of astronomical data, published the following three laws of planetary motion. One, a planet revolves around the sun in an elliptical orbit with one sun, with, with one sun, with the sun at one focus. Two, the line joining the sun to a planet sweeps out equal areas and equal times. And three, the square of the period of revolution of a planet is proportional to the cube of the length of the major axis of its orbit. So this just says that Kepler formed his uh, laws in terms of planets motion around the sun, but this works the same for any object orbiting around a single gravitational force. We're going to slightly alter our equation of an ellipse just because it's useful when we're discussing um, planetary motion to kind of be able to see where the vertices of the major axis are in the equation. And so we're going to be taking this relationship that we had from our last class. So uh, a squared equals e squared times d squared over 1 minus e squared quantity squared. And instead of writing our ellipse equation like this, this is our standard equation in polar uh, coordinates of an ellipse. We're going to sub out the d to be an expression that involves a, because a is the distance from the center to the major axis, right? And so all we're doing is a little bit of algebra here. This step, they just swapped places with a and d. Um, and then taking the square root, we end up with d equals a times 1 minus e squared over e. And then you can multiply e to the other side to get ed equals a times 1 minus e squared. And then we're just going to replace this ed in the numerator with the a times 1 minus e squared. And again, that's just helpful for us because in an ellipse, A is the distance from the center of the ellipse to the major axis vertex. And so that just puts A in the equation for us to be able to quickly identify how long the major axis is. All right. So this is the polar equation of an ellipse with the focus at the origin, semi-major axis A, eccentricity E, 
and directrix x equals d is written in that form that we just noted. And then just a couple of astronomical terms. Um, the perihelion is the point when your object is closest to the sun. It's also called the perigee sometimes. And then the aphelion is the, the point at which we're furthest from the sun. All right. From this diagram? That's the planet. And this is the orbit, so this would be the perigee, and this is the aphelion. Um, so to come up with formulas for the uh, the perihelion and aphelion, if the sun is at the focus F, for the perihelion, we have theta equals zero, so the radius R equals A times one minus E squared over one plus E cosine zero. Um, and then cosine of zero is one, right? So I have a times one minus e squared over one plus e. So I can factor one minus e squared to one minus e times one plus e. And that's over one plus e. Those cancel. And so the formula for perihelion is just A times 1 minus E. For the yes, <clears throat> for the radius, yeah, the distance. Similarly, for the aphelion, we can plug in pi for theta. And we're going to end up with r equals a times 1 plus e. So the perihelion distance from a planet to the sun is a times 1 minus e, where a is the length of its semi-major axis, meaning half the length of the major axis. And then the aphelion is a times 1 plus e. Okay, let's do an example. So we're going to find the approximate polar equation for the elliptical orbit of Earth around the sun. Given that the eccentricity is about 0.017 and the length of the major axis is about 2.99 times 10 to the 8th kilometers. All right, so we have E is approximately 0.017. We have A is 2.99 times 10 to the 8th divided by 2. 
So they give us the length of the major axis. So A is half of that. 2.99 divided by 2 is 1.495. So 1.495 times 10 to the 8. All right. So it's just R equals 1 minus general formula. R equals 1 minus E squared over 1 plus E cosine theta. Is that right? Oh, A times 1 minus E squared, sorry. So for us, that's going to be R equals 1.495 times 10 to the 8th times 1 minus 0 0.017 squared over 1 plus 0.017 cosine theta. We could probably simplify <clears throat> 1 minus 0 0.017 squared. <coughs> but I'm not going to because it comes out to a longer decimal and I would just rather leave it more exact. All right, I'll graph that in a second. B, so that's A. B, find the distance from the Earth to the Sun at perihelion and at aphelion. So perihelion is A times one minus E and aphelion is A times one plus E. All right, so I have 1.495 times 10 to the 8th times 1 minus 0 0.017. 254.1500. So at our closest, we're about two and a half million kilometers away from the sun. I mean, it's, it's an approximation just because our eccentricity is an approximation, but it's pretty precise. And then our aphelion would be 1.495 times 10 to the 8th times 1 plus 0.017. Oops. Oh, you know what? I screwed up that first one. I'm sorry. I just multiplied it by 0 0.017, not 1 minus 0 0.017. So it's a different value. All right, so the value should actually be for that, for the perihelion. 1, 4, 6, 9, 5, 8, 5, 0, 0. All right, so 146 almost 147 million kilometers. Woo. It would be a lot toastier around here if we were only two and a half million kilometers away. <laughs> But 
I think we already talked about this in here, but I think it's interesting. It's not because I, I don't know. I guess intuitively, I would have thought, oh, that must be due to that's why seasons change. It's winter at our aphelion, it's summer at our perihelion, but that's stupid because that would mean everywhere around the world has the same seasons at the same time of year, which is obviously not the case. So actually, that distance makes almost no difference in like temperature on Earth. It's weird to think about, right? They're just used to having it in the summer. Yeah, that's bizarre. It feels like that would be more of a cultural touchstone. Like that should be in movies and stuff, right? But it isn't. Yeah, where people are like going to the beach, like that's a tradition. That's what's <laughs> insane because Christmas is so associated with cold. Yeah. Like they have Santa, don't they? Yeah. Like a dune buggy. All right, let's. I went there once during our summer and their winter, but it doesn't get it doesn't get very cold there. Um, all right, so let's take a look at what this orbit looks like. Um, it's going to be hard. All right, so we're going to do 1.495 times 10. To the eighth. Uh, oh, shoot. No, no. R equals. All right, so I'm going to have to zoom way out. There it is. So there's what our orbit looks like. Um, basically with the sun at the center. So you can see where the, our eccentricity is so small, it's, it's basically circular. It's barely elliptical. <laughs> All right, I think that's it.